Hi, uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming out today. Um, we apologize for the lateness in the month for this meeting. We had to push our board meeting back um, and it's been a busy month. Uh, we are going to be back on the regular schedule for next month. We're going to um, detach this a little bit from the board meeting. Um, so we don't want to be waiting for the board meeting to uh, happen and then have this scheduled uh, jump around. So, um, so we'll give you an update on that real quick. Um, we're going to be going over some announcements for the coming month um, and then going over financials, memory summary, and then some updates. We are trying a little bit of a different format um, this month. Uh, we'd like your feedback on how it goes um, and thoughts and cons considerations. Effectively, we're going to record this meeting and rebroadcast it or have it available um, for anyone else who wants to tune in later. Um, and then have a QA, um, additional QA session this evening at six o'clock, accompanied with the barbecue outside for us to sit and chat about anything here, any other concerns about Hacker Dojo, or if you just want to talk about how nice the weather is, that's great too. Um, but instead of giving the same presentation twice in the same day, we wanted to have a little bit more time that we can um, connect with members rather than just go over the same material uh, a bunch of different times. So, like your feedback on that. Um, so, let us know if you have constructive uh, criticism, comments, um, if this works well for you guys, or if you really like the uh, dual format meeting that we had before, where we had a meeting at noon and a meeting at six. <laughs> All right, so we'll jump right in. Um, so, we're going to start off with some announcements for some upcoming events that we want to. Um, highlight that we can you get, use your help with. Um, on June 9th, we'll have our next volunteer day. This will be a little bit shorter format than the ones we've done uh, the last couple of times. So this will probably be about six hours in total. Um, we're gonna be really targeting cleaning up and finishing up some of the projects that we've had in progress, including a couple of additional um, painting areas that we want to really just get the um, painting wrapped up in the last couple of areas that um, that we've been working on. Um, hopefully you guys like the new cleaner look that we've been working on um, and the new accent colors and things like that. Uh, we're gonna be doing a little bit more um, and we can definitely use your help with that as well as doing some organizing of the um, spaces in the electronics lab, the laser lab, as well as out here. We have new ping board in both of the labs. So we wanna get all the tools out, organized, things cleaned up, uh, make the spaces a lot more usable and more presentable. Um, following that, on the 12th, we will have our next members <laughs> meeting. Um, so uh, Tiana will be posting out the um, uh, event for that. That should be uh, live fairly soon. Um, we're going to stick with the um, second Wednesday. Is it the second Wednesday of each month for the um, members meeting? Yeah, second, second Wednesday of each month for the members meeting. We want to get that earlier in the month so that you guys, you know, aren't getting information that might be a little bit out of date. You'll have as current of information as anyone else, um, and we want to have that at the beginning of the month, earlier in the month rather than at the end. Um, we're also um, on the 14th. Um, we have a hackathon scheduled that is being hosted by MongoDB. Um, just want to give everyone a heads up, this is a Friday. New, usually we're doing hackathons on the weekends. This is a weekday hackathon um, and it is all day. So uh, co-working space out here and the classroom space are going to be used pretty much all day. Um, we would love to have you guys participate in that hackathon. Come out, have a great time. There, I'm sure there'll be catered food and all of that. It's going to be a really fun event. Um, there's going to be a lot of uh, videographers, photographers here as well. Um, it should be a really, really cool hackathon. I'm really looking forward to it. MongoDB has been um, really good to work with, so we're looking forward to that. Um, but I do want to give you guys a heads up that this space and the classroom are not going to be available as normal for <coughs> co-working um, and workspace. We are going to keep the, um, the Kaminsky and Brooklyn open, and then the laser lab and the electronics lab um, also will be open for co-working. So, you know, if you, you still need um, stuff, oh, this is going to come to us. Um, if you still need um, need to work in here, um, please come in. We'll make sure that you have a, a desk and a space and we'll support you however you can, however we can. Um, but we'll get that on everyone's radar just so you don't come in Friday and are surprised. Um, and then on uh, June 15th and 16th is open sauce. Um, for those that don't know, Open Source is kind of a convention for 
makers and content creators um, that's being held in San Francisco. We are gonna be having a booth there. We can use a little bit more volunteer help both in the prep for that and actually um, at the event. If you're willing to help out at the event um, for most of the day, we can get you in for free. We have a couple of volunteer passes, um, so we can use some additional help with that. Uh, Eva and Bo are the primary leads on um, organizing that, so if you are interested in helping out, uh, definitely let them know. Also, Thursday and Friday is going to be the uh, Yes, there's, there's events like Thursday and Friday. Um, Thursday will probably be low down. Here is the camera. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't pull. Yeah. Okay. Just... Okay. Apologies, technical issues. Okay. Dog created. Uh, he was napping, just like a kid. You know, wakes up from, from the nap at the worst, worst possible times. All right. Um, so, um, yeah, if you're interested in helping out with open sauce, there's a lot of really cool events going on around that event. Um, Adam Savage is going to be there. Um, Mark Rover is going to be there. There's a lot of different content creators, people that you probably watch on YouTube that um, attend that event. Uh, so it should be a lot of fun and really interesting. Definitely encourage you to go. Um, it's kind of like a maker fair for content creators, um, if you will. Um, and then we have a couple of ways that we'd like to um, have some additional help from the community. Um, Volunteering is the biggest one. We can use help running events. We can use help um, putting on things like the hackathon, um, giving tours, um, hosting all of our different meetups, um, posting flyers in the community, doing outreach at things like Farmer's Market or the Electronics Flea Market. Um, <coughs> did I say, yeah, Farmer's Market. Um, and lots of other ways. Um, we can always use extra help and extra hands with some of those tasks that you know, often just take a little bit of time. Um, so if you're willing to do that, if you're interested, um, please let either Bo or myself or Tiana know, um, and we'll find different ways that, um, that we can use your help. Um, one of the other big ways that you can help out is by posting and sharing our different events. Um, this is one of the great ways that you can help spread the word about Hacker Dojo. You have an entire community around you of people that we don't know yet. Um, and so please share, and, uh, share the events that we post. Um, invite people out to the game nights, to Python meetup, um, 3D printing night, um, whatever it may be. Invite your community as well to be a part of Hacker Dojo. That helps, out, helps us out a lot um, and helps just build all those events up a little bit more. Why is it not doing full screen? You're supposed to have really tried hitting the drop down from the dots. Right, right, to the right. There we go. Um, and then um, hosting a meetup. You know, we're always looking for new meetups, and this is a way that we've had, um, you know, have built a lot of the events that we have going on right now. <laughs> if there's something that you're interested in that you want to share with the larger community, we'd love to talk about um, hosting a meetup on a regular basis or as a one-off here at Hacker Dojo. Uh, we have a couple of new ones starting this um, coming month. Uh, Eva is hosting a cosplay meetup um, for cosplay costuming and prop making. Uh, that'll be on every other Saturday. Um, we just launched a 3D printing meetup. Um, we have our movie nights. There's a lot of different ways to get involved. It doesn't necessarily have to be a technical thing. Um, a lot of these are about building community and making connections with other people in the tech community. So um, please reach out to Tiana or myself if that's something that you are interested in. Um, and then of course, um, we always appreciate our donors. Um, we were very, very fortunate that last month we had a really significant donation come in. Um, and a big part of that is seeing the support that we have among the community. Um, every donation helps helps us keep the lights on, doors open, um, and coffee well stocked, things like that. Um, so please continue to support Hacker Dojo. We really appreciate um, all of the support to this point. Um, it just helps us build and continue growing stronger and stronger as an orga organization. So we really, really appreciate all those that have been able to financially support us um, as well this past year. All right, any questions on any of the um, announcements or events? Are you checking Slack for me? Um, keep an eye on the Okay. Check Slack. 
Or rather, yeah, so it can go yeah. Of course, yeah. All right. All right, so on finances, um, so this is the um, P&L, profit and loss, for year to date. This was um, about a week ago, uh, but is pretty accurate and reflective of where we are now. The uh, good news is that we've had a really successful year this, um, this year so far. Um, we, as I mentioned before, we had a $35,000 donation that came in um, in April. Um, and so an honest donor helps really get us a little bit of a buffer that we hadn't had uh, really in the last year. And so that financial buffer is allowing us to make some investments in the organization um, and really just get ahead of you know, all the costs of running an organization. Um, the other good news is that setting aside that donation, we're actually about $20,000 positive for the year, um, year to date. Um, so depending on when in the month um, you look at it, because we have the big uh, rent payment that goes out on the first, um, but anywhere from fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a net positive year to date. So that's really good news for us as, as an organization. Um, it's trying to rebuild some of our financial reserves that um, had gone down through COVID, reopening the new location, um, and most of last year. Um, so we're definitely trending in the right direction. This has been helped a lot through a lot of the different events, um, hackathons that we've done. So the sponsors that we have along the way, as well as the donors and all the members who continue to um, be here every day and support us as an organization. Um, there's not a lot that's changed other than the cash balance. Um, most of our equipment has, and other holdings have stayed roughly the same, but it's the cash on hand that has been the biggest challenge for us um, over the last year. And so seeing this trending in the right direction is definitely good news for us as an organization. Um, any questions on this? <laughs> All right, um, next one. So um, one of the areas that we're still struggling a little, little bit with, and again, can use your help doing outreach. Uh, membership has been pretty flat um, over most of the last year. Um, there's a lot of reasons why people aren't necessarily um, joining new spaces or are you know cutting down expenses. The tech sector right now is really challenging, as you know everyone here knows, um, particularly in this region. So we're very, very fortunate. Um, I think that we have kept as many members as we have, but we've also seen a lot of people who just can't afford it right now and are cutting expenses and moving out of the area um, or just taking a couple months while they look for a new job, next opportunity, things like that. Um, so it's definitely been a challenging economic time for a lot of people. And this is one of the reasons why you know, even small donation dollars help a lot. Um, we're able to, um, extend a limited number of memberships for people who are in financial need, have been laid off, things like that. But we only have a certain limited amount of that that we can offer. Um, and a lot of that is supported through how we're doing on donations and how you know, a couple of members have stepped up, you know, have recurring donations each month. And that helps support us and lets us make investments in the community when we know that someone's going through a job transition and still wants to stay here active at Hacker Dojo um, or is on a volunteer membership, things like that. Um, we're able to support a lot of our members in the community um, a little bit more effectively because we're in a better financial position. Um, so again, really appreciate our donors that have helped us to this point. Um, but that's where all those donor dollars you know, help support. That's the type of programs that we're able to continue getting people you know, connections with jobs, other entrepreneurs, new training, things like that. Um, April um, was our best revenue month in the last year. This was helped by uh, the two hackathons we had. It was a long weekend, so thanks to everyone who helped show up for that, and especially Tiana, who's running a lot of that. Um, those um, events brought in about $5,000 of revenue for the organization. Um, so things like that, we're going to continue um, building the cadence of events that we're doing. We try to keep them again on weekends so we're not interfering with everyone's work during the week, um, but it definitely helps um, us as an organization grow our financial reserves. Um, and then um, the- uh, Are your, I don't see your Google Meet meeting, they're not seeing your screen or audio. Yeah. Let's see, let's see. I don't know why that closed. One second. <laughs> so 
Sorry. Off. Okay. Yeah, they haven't seen any of the slides yet. Oh, none yeah. of the slides. Yeah, because okay. we're in the meeting. We're going to circle back for everyone that's online. Quick rewind. It is recorded. So, a highlight a bunch of events um, coming up that would love some support on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pop back into full screen. I should already be. On, on that view. <laughs> All right, um, so we have seen a uh, slight increase in the um, membership revenue, um, even though membership has been flat. Uh, so that is members upgrading, annual memberships, dedicated desks being a little bit expanded, some of the add-ons like the lockers and mail service that we offer. Um, but overall, that's been pretty flat as a revenue source for us. Um, and that's one of the areas that like I mentioned before, we can definitely use your help. Invite your friends to come here. Um, we have a guest policy up to five days in a month. You can come in as a guest for free. Um, so invite your friends, come and have them check out the space, see if they like it. Um, if they want to support us as an organization, you know that's a great way to uh, help convert, bring new people in um, and grow membership base a little bit more. Um, this is really the bread and butter of what supports Hacker Dojo on a day-to-day -day basis. All the other events and things that we do help add to that, but we want to build that membership base up so that that's covering all of our essential costs, um, you know, so that we aren't reliant on having to, you know, have hackathons or, you know, other events. Uh, we want to be sustainable as an organization and then use those other events that we do to help us grow as an organization um, as we're able to and as it makes um, economic sense for us. We are going to be adding in a new part-time position um, that will be a community manager, community support, um, and really a person that will be here um, to help out members with any problems that they have. Um, they'll be a little bit more responsible for um, bringing in new members as well, doing outreach events, but really making sure that you know, all of the amenities and challenges that members might run into or need um, are addressed in a really timely fashion. Um, Tiana and I are, only have so much time um, and we're at a point financially where we can afford to uh, bring one more person in. It will be a part-time position um, at first, um, but hopefully as membership grows, that'll grow into a full-time position. Um, but uh, that's one of the things we have planned probably in the next month or so. Um, we are meeting as a board um, in the middle of June to look at some long-term goals for Hacker Dojo and where we want to go as an organization um, and kind of look aspirationally forward over the next couple of years and where, uh, where we want to end up. All right, um, so the major points from April, and again, I apologize, this is a little bit outdated why we're gonna try and move these, um, move these meetings up earlier in the month. Um, overall, really strong revenue month. May is also looking fairly good. Um, we did wrap up our Summit program. This is the program that we've been doing with Summit Public Charter Schools at three of their local high schools over the last nine months. Um, so we did wrap that up last, um, last month. Um, so final payment came in for that, um, and that's uh, some of the you know, increased cash revenue that we have right now um, is the last payment for that came in. Um, we are um, above uh, break even year to date, and that's even excluding the Bitcoin uh, or half uh, Bitcoin donation that we got um, in April. Um, there are some caveats to this that we want to highlight. The summit revenue that has been you know, really helping us month to month is not something that's going to be there during the summer. We are meeting um, later today with Summit to talk about the program next year, but there will be a gap over the summer when that revenue is not coming in. Um, so we're going to be looking at other ways to offset that drop in the revenue, um, and that's going to be things like the events that we're doing, uh, youth camps, and um, a couple of other initiatives that we're working on that will bring in additional revenue. Um, as I mentioned before, in um, the hackathon at the end of April, it's about $4,500 of revenue um, to Hacker Dojo. 
Um, we've been going to the electronics flea market once a month. If you haven't been there, it's a great opportunity to see some really great vintage equipment and chat with other people. Um, a lot of analog hardware as well as some more modern digital stuff. Uh, so if you like analog hardware and vintage stuff, it's a really great, uh, great event. Uh, we've been going out every month for that. It's typically the second Sunday of each month. Um, and that's been it. Through September. Yeah, through September. They don't do it during the rainy months. Um, yeah, 6 a.m. Yeah, 6 a.m. to noon. So you have to get up early and get your coffee. Uh, but it's a really great place to go and meet um, fellow enthusiasts and find some really, really cool stuff. Um, so we've been getting a lot of really good um, leads. A lot of people are interested in what we're doing. That hasn't translated to memberships just yet, but as people come to more of our events, you know, we know that's how they eventually uh, become members. Um, then on the negative side, as I mentioned, uh, we will see the uh, slight downtick in our month-to-month -month finances without the summit revenue coming in. Um, and then we're working on offsetting that with summer camps um, and other events um, like the hackathon um, in three weeks. Um, so again, uh, really appreciate that so many people have you know, really stuck with us, donated, kept their memberships running. Um, it, last year was definitely a challenging year for Hacker Dojo. Um, and really excited to see it moving in a really positive direction um, right now. There's still a lot of work to do. Uh, we're not where we'd like to be um, for sustainability um, and for long-term growth. We're not gonna always be in this building and we're trying to look at what the next location might look like um, because this is a little bit small for where we'd like to be. Um, most Hacker Dojo members remember when we had you know, 12, 14,000 square feet and we want to be getting back towards having a larger facility so that we can have a hackathon and not displace people who are working here at the same time. Uh, so we are going to be looking forward towards that, but that you know moves are always very expensive. Um, so we have to build up our cash reserves uh, even more in anticipation of that in the future. Um, some of the other updates, um, the volunteer day that we had last month, we actually had two of them. Really appreciate all the volunteers who came out for that. Um, and we got a lot done. Um, I hope that you're all enjoying these, you know, new paint scheme and new colors that we're adding in. We are going to be, as I mentioned before, doing one more of those um, next month on the 9th. Um, but really appreciate how much um, how much volunteer effort people have come and put in. Um, some of the people were here for seven, eight hours, um, pretty much all day, uh, painting, sanding, um, taping, and really appreciate people being involved. Really adds a good look to the space. Um, and we're really, really appreciative of all the uh, help that people have contributed. Um, we got our open source application approved. Um, as I mentioned, Bo and Eva are gonna be helping plan and execute that. Um, we did finally hear back from Google. We had mentioned before that we were talking with Google about potentially using one of their buildings as a future home for Hacker Dojo. Um, that conversation isn't dead. Uh, they've just been really busy and really restructuring a lot of their long-term plans. Um, so they are hoping to get a, an update to us by the end of this month um, on what properties they may have available for us. Um, and so we're uh, hopeful that that will uh, bear fruit this time. Um, and then, as mentioned, we have some new hackathons and events um, in the works. If you're interested in hosting and helping run some of these larger events, we could really use some additional help. We would like to be running some of our own hackathons um, that are really headlined by Hacker Dojo, that we're setting you know, what the challenges are, things like that. Um, but they take a lot of effort and work and organization to pull off. So if that's something that you're interested in either learning about or participating with, um, please do reach out to us and let us know um, and we'll get you involved in some of the um, upcoming plans that we have. We'd love for people who want to come out and shadow and just see how, how a hackathon runs, um, come out to you know, one of the ones that we have planned coming up and see what happens behind the scenes. Um, it's a lot of fun. It can be challenging, um, but it's a great way to give back to the community and really help bring a lot of people together. Um, I think hackathons are some of the best energy that we ever have in here. Uh, when you have 100 people just, you know, all day just going crazy, trying to you know, uh, work through, iterate through a project, get something completed. 
Um, I love the energy for those, um, and it's a lot of fun. So if you want to be involved in that, please do let us know. Any questions? Any questions from you guys? That's all that I've got for you today. Um, we're trying to keep these a little bit shorter and have time for questions and chatting afterwards. Um, so any questions? Anything you guys would like to see covered in these meetings that we're not covering? Yeah. Do we sell stuff in the flea market? Do we sell stuff in the flea market? Yes. Um, and was that? Yeah. Am I allowed to sell something in the, in the flea market? If you want to, if you want to bring something and donate to Hacker Dojo, we will take it and sell it. If you want to bring your own stuff and come with us, that's also possible. What I suggest would donate half of whatever your proceeds are. Um, we do pay for the spot. It's um, forty dollars for a double spot, sixty for a triple uh, parking lot um, spots. Um, so if you want to come and sell with us and volunteer and bring your stuff out, we would love that. So yeah, uh, contact myself or Bo. Bo usually um, goes out to those. Um, I try to as well. Yeah, I do. Absolutely. Yeah. When we donate something to the Hacker Dojo to sell at the flea market, where do the proceeds go? Do they go to the Hacker Dojo or do they go to Para or whoever is? I can uh, jump in. Oh, they go, they go to Hacker Dojo. So what? Um, so we pay the um, the fee forty or sixty dollars. And that's what's supporting, uh, or goes towards supporting the organization that is the, the monthly you know, organization that's being supported. But anything that we sell that was donated by a member, those proceeds go to Hacker Dojo. Good, thank you. Yeah. And I'll just add to that, yeah, it's $40 for us. And so uh, I also totally accept and help coordinate picking up any donations, uh, especially like the few days before, if people just wanna bring donations here or coordinate with me, I can help pick them up. And yeah, all the proceeds are going to the dojo. And then yeah, if you wanna get in on our spot and have your own personal items, then you know I've done that a couple of times and we kind of do like a 50-50 split and that makes it easier to cover our overhead and then you still have money. You don't have to pay 40 bucks out of pocket. You can take half and at least cover your gas money. And also I think it's a great way to support the dojo and highly encourage folks if you know of any good stuff that people want to get rid of we can help move it and uh, also raise a few bucks and spread some awareness so it's going to be uh, I believe June 9th is the next one for second Tuesdays um, it's a lot of fun if you haven't done it I know it's ridiculous show up at 6 a.m. there's this convenient thing where there's usually an ultimate game night the night before so if one were to come here and game all night long you can be the first one in line and uh, just keep on going but also if you get there at 10 or 11 come on out take a look around uh, and if you're just coming to visit it's three dollars for parking uh, otherwise everything's free, there's some coffee, and yeah, we are fundamentally supporting, this is how a whole bunch of amateur radio clubs around the Bay Area do their annual funding. They ho they co-host one event, group called Asvaro coordinates it all, and then nominates, like last month was the Palo Alto Amateur Radio Club, and they were basically able to restock their reserves just by doing this one event and helping out. So it all goes to a good cause. Obviously I'm passionate about radio and hope to see folks out there as well, so. Thanks. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a great, great event. Um, do recommend if you're shopping for deals the last hour and a half, um, people do not want to take stuff home. So there will be, uh, if, you, if you like going through um, really unique equipment, there's a lot of stuff that people will, you know, in the last half hour or so, really want to get out so that they don't have to um, take it home. We do the same thing. Um, so definitely I recommend coming out uh, if you haven't been um, out. It's definitely one of the fixtures of Silicon Valley. It's been running for, I don't know how many years now, um, but a long time um, and a lot of fun. All right, any other questions? Question about donating decade-old tech books, if it's useful for the dojo or to sell. Donating decade-old tech books? Um, probably not terribly useful here. I don't see a lot of the library being used in general, um, but definitely something that could be uh, taken to the flea market. Um, we are also working on um, hosting a donation drive um, through Savers, which is a more general um, donation drive. They do accept books for that. So if you don't, don't necessarily um, throw them out, um, we should have details on that in the next couple of weeks um, when we finalize the dates for that. One more 
Uh, so related to that, if your uh, decade old tech books or otherwise are amateur radio related, the Internet Archive, archive.org, has a specific budget and mission to digitize all of historical amateur radio documentation. So they are taking materials by the truckload uh, and they're all basically more than a decade old. So that's another option to look into if you do have something really interesting. Uh, I have a project on the side, I actually just uncovered a couple of boxes uh, from Bayfair Mall in the East Bay. They have photo books going back to the 80s plus and like eight millimeter film rolls. So plan on taking all that to the archive and hopefully digitizing it. So that might be another option. Cool. Where that yeah. All right, anything else? Uh, All right, uh, we will be back at six o'clock for uh, more Q and A. So if you think about something between now and then, either grab me at the front desk um, or come back at six. Uh, we are going to be doing probably um, hamburgers and hot dogs. We we'll have the barbecue going this afternoon. Um, so please do come back out and chat with us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Chris.